Ready? <laughs> Happy New Year! Happy New Year! <laughs> We're here with the first uh, subscription video, Tasting with Friends, of 2020. You got 2020 vision? No, I have terrible eyesight and I wear contact lenses. Okay, I don't have 2020 vision either, but I have a lot of visions for 2020. Uh, sp <laughs> <laughs> speaking of, <laughs> what are we doing in 2020? What's the first thing you want to do? We our we our we are about to launch our new website very soon, which we're super excited about because we have worked very hard the last few months on getting this ship shape for everyone. Yeah. And hopefully it will come with a brand new design and content and coffee that is a lot more easier to find. Yes. So bear with us uh, if the transaction from the old to the new website might not go so super smooth as you would wish, especially if you're a recurring subscriber, then please email us. And uh, hopefully everything will run smoothly. But with technology, you never know. We'll do our best. Yeah, there's always something. So who are you? Uh, my name is Krissa. You may remember me from an earlier coffee subscription video. Yeah. I do the marketing and website related stuff here at Tim and Lowe. Yeah. I wanted to get you back because you are actually responsible for making the new website. More or less. We're getting some help as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to taste the uh, first coffees we're going to send out uh, in January. Uh, normally, if you're a new subscriber, and I guess, I'm guessing there's a lot of new subscribers this month because a lot of people give subscriptions to people or their friends or the family as a Christmas gift. And you can buy either a recurring subscription mm -hmm. that never stops until you stop it, but you can pause it anytime you like and so on. Or you can buy it as a gift or, you know, for yourself as well, like yeah. a three month subscription, or a six month subscription, or a 12 month subscription. And you can choose between one, two and three bags. So if you're lucky, you'll get three bags. If you're not so lucky, you'll still get really still good coffee. Lucky. Yeah, <laughs> you'll get one bag. Cool. Let's just dive into the coffees, I guess. Yeah. I have chosen three very similar coffees, I guess, this month. But again, they're quite different. One thing they have in common is the kind of fruit they taste like. But uh, you know, fruit can be so many things. So. The kind of theme of it, normally we can send out coffees from you know, one farm. It could be like two or three different varieties from the same farm. It could be two or three different pickings. Or it might be you know, two different coffees from Kenya or something like that. This time we have three very different coffees. Uh, but they all have one thing in common and that's the kind of flavors they have. Which the whole kind of subject of it is red fruit. And why red fruit? Christmas. No, it's not Christmas. It's, we're beyond <laughs> Christmas. But uh, red fruit is a very common uh, descriptor in coffee, and but it can taste quite different. It can be strawberries, could be blackcurrants, mm. could be you know, blackberries, it could be rose hips, it could be even raisins. You know, anything that kind of comes to mind when you think of red fruit, uh, you can find in coffee. The first one is a coffee from Mexico. Cool. Yeah. The Noma coffee. No, it's not exactly the Noma coffee, but. Mexico is not an origin we have worked a lot in, uh, but we started going there um, when Restaurant Noma had their pop-up there in Tulum. And they asked us to find some Mexican coffee uh, so that they could serve in their Mexican pop-up restaurant. Uh, and then I asked for a lot of samples from many different farms and stuff in Mexico. And I got a couple of samples from Jesus Salazar, which has a company called Café Orlojo in San Cristobal de las Casas in Chiapas in Mexico. That's a lot of Spanish yeah. names. <laughs> you can tell his accent's quite good. Mm. He has a bed and breakfast, a coffee shop, and a roastery in San Cristobal de las Casas. And because of that, he works with a group of indigenous farmers that are around this town in Chiapas. And they all have one thing in common, is that they grow coffee very traditionally. So without any mineral fertilizer, without pesticides, without any kind of agrochemicals. So it's basically organic, but it's not certified. I have to say that. Uh, if you go to the farms, they will grow, you know, corn, plantain, bananas, some coffee, and the soils are really rich. You see a lot of organic material on the, on the soil. And so, and it's very kind of mountainous, uh, a lot of fog, you know, cold. Yeah. Um, perfect conditions for coffee, actually. 
And these coffees are normally Bourbon and Katura. They have some other varieties as well, but the one we're testing now is from two producers, uh, Pedro Gomez and uh, Alonso Luna. Um, and the reason why we had to blend it is because they have very, very small farms and produce very small amounts of coffee. So we kind of had to mix it together in order to make a lot that makes sense. Mm -hmm. They both grow Bourbon and Katura, and let's just taste it. Cool. Yeah. What do you think, Risa? Not banana. Red fruit flavors. And not banana. It doesn't taste like banana, no. It's a process of elimination. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me try again. Mm. It's hard to put a, it, it has a, a nice mouth feel yeah. for me at least. Very rich. Yeah. Quite juicy. And I know juicy is a kind of fashion word in coffee, but this coffee makes my mouth salivate. And that's for me is juicy. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it, for me, it has a lot of this kind of cocoa nib flavor. I'm, not many people have eaten cocoa nibs, but it's kind of a cool chocolate flavor. Like yeah. it has a cooling effect in your mouth, uh, and it's kind of a little dry, but uh, it's kind of you know chocolatey as well. Yeah. And but you probably have tasted dark chocolate that has some fruity flavors, and uh, that's because they ferment ca cacao, so that you can have a lot of these kind of very funky flavors. This for me is not funky at all. It's just a very clean red fruit uh, with chocolate. Yeah. Do you find that it makes a difference when you slurp? Yeah, of course. When you draw in air into your mouth, uh, the air has to disappear somewhere. So it disappears up into your nasal cavity or behind your na nose, the olfactory center. And that's the center that detects what kind of aroma molecules come up to your nose. So it will say, hmm, this is similar to the molecules that I will find in strawberries, for instance. Yeah. And that's why you taste strawberries in coffee. So it can be the same kind of structure of the molecules. All right, second, so the Mexican coffee will go out to all our subscribers. And then the second coffee is very, very different from a very different country, but also has red fruit, fruit flavor. And this is from Kenya. It's kind of the most one of the most talked about coffees last year from us. Uh, of course, this is a different harvest, but it's from the same place. It's Karinga. It's a washing station at around 2,000 meters in Kiambu in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Cool. Wow. So much more floral than the other one. Mm. Just very intense. Mm. Higher acidity. Yeah. Um, I get rose hips, raisins, black currants, you know, very kind of complex, a lot of flavor. Uh, Kenyan coffees are famous for these kind of black currant, rose mm -hmm. hip kind of flavors. And this is, you know, no exception. It's very, very classic yeah. Kenyan flavor, I think. You like it? I do. It seems to be more um, complex than the first one. Yeah. So much more happening. Yeah. Like even you can smell it in the cup before you Definitely. taste it. Very aromatic. And this is mainly due to the SL28, SL34 variety combination that they have planted in this, you know, traditionally in Kenya, that's what they grow. And because this is very high altitude, they haven't planted a lot of these new hybrids that can be inferior in quality because they have less problems with leaf rust and, you know, prob they have less problems with the trees. So they're still growing a lot of this SL28 and SL34. Mm -hmm. If you go, let me top up your Mexican. If you go back to the Mexican now, then it's quite easy to see that it tastes, you know, very chocolatey and... Mm. Mm. Yeah, a little bit strawberry-like. Yeah. Or like if you have like very sweet cherries like morals or something like that. Yeah, like those, um, those like Christmas chocolates with the stuffing inside. Yeah, exactly. Very good. All right, so first coffee from Mexico, second coffee from Kenya. And the third coffee uh, is one of my kind of, I, can I say coffee crush? <laughs> <laughs> it's from the first farm we started working very closely with in Honduras, Nascimento. And this is uh, Hobnil's SL28 variety. So Hobnil is a farmer that we have been working with since 2009. 
Um, and I managed to get him some seeds that are this Kenyan variety. Um, so we planted that together, I think six years ago now. And this is the kind of second real harvest. It's actually the third harvest, but the first picking is always not so good. Mm -hmm. This is the second kind of real harvest we get from him. And this is planted on top of his farm uh, in very cool climate. So it takes you know, longer time for the trees to grow and so on. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like planted among rocks and you know, it's very kind of rough up there. Yeah. Uh, but it's basically the same varieties as the Kenyan, just grown in Honduras, not in Kenya. Okay. So let's see if we can taste the difference. To me, I still taste those floral notes, but it's not as intense or immediate as the second. Yeah. Group. It's a little subtler. It's definitely, yeah, it's, it's more subtle for sure. Bigger body. Like yeah. if you go back to the middle one now, it's more elegant, like tea-like. Yeah. The third one, more like rich. Yeah, has like a th slightly thicker mouthfeel. Yeah, exactly. Still red fruit flavor, maybe more towards like blackberries mm. rather than the kind of tart Sweeter, black yeah. currants like the second one has. And definitely floral, but not this kind of jasmine floral that you can find in Ethiopian coffees. It's more like a, you know, just fresh flowers. Yeah. Like a bouquet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. So that's the three coffees we're going to send out in, in uh, this, this month. month. Um, normally we'll send it out the first Wednesday of the month. So in some occasions, uh, you know, maybe the first of the month will be on a Thursday. That means we will send it out on the next week, the next week. So that will be like the eighth or seventh or whatever it is. Um, but so just so you know, uh, every first Wednesday of the month is normally when we send out and there can be some exceptions because of holidays and so on. Uh, and we do send out newsletters to everyone and of course we make this video so you're able to taste the coffees with us. I highly recommend you know tasting coffees side by side so even if you just subscribe to one coffee uh, you can buy any other coffee. It doesn't really matter what quality it is either it could be you know instant coffee. It makes it a lot easier if you have something to compare with yeah. when you taste so just get any coffee and taste it next to this yeah. and I'm sure you will learn something from it. It's a good tip. Cool. Anything else we need to talk about? No, just stay tuned for a new website. Yes, stay tuned for a new website. We'll try to make more of these videos uh, in the, this year. Uh, maybe we had some requests on doing some espresso videos, so we will try, try. to set that <laughs> up. You know. <laughs> cool. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.